Sean Marsh will be our graduate this year. Um, and as this school year and graduation comes to a close, the uh, end of your chapter is, is ending, but a new one is going to begin. And uh, as you uh, journey on your new um, chapter, uh, the Mule of Church, the church you grew up in, would like to present this Bible to you. And our prayer is that you will read it, you will study it, you will live by it, and in times of trouble that you will turn to this Bible. Uh, Jesus said in John chapter 14, um, <clears throat> I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one gets to the Father but by me. In John chapter 15, he says, I am the vine and you are the branches. And if you remain in me and bear fruit, uh, I want you to remain in me and bear fruit. But if you do not remain in me and bear fruit, the Father will cut the branches and turn them into fire. So, so our prayer is that you will remain in Jesus and your next journey. Um, would you like to uh, share with the congregation what your plans are? I'm planning to go to a high university for aviation. Great. Well, congratulations on your graduation. Okay, guys, so good morning. All right, so I decided to kind of teach you a little bit about something that maybe you join us in saying every week when Pastor Brown's finishing up his <coughs> before he starts his sermon. We always end it with the prayer that's written in the Bible, the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Do you know the name of that prayer? Yeah. The what? Almost. The, the Lord's Prayer. Okay, which it is a very holy prayer. Okay, but it's titled The Lord's Prayer. Okay, so I have it written out here. I know it by heart. I say it every week a couple times when I come to church. But um, as I break it down, I don't want to screw it up. <laughs> it's up here. Um, so it starts out with our Father who art in heaven. So I have a little picture here. It's Jesus, okay? Jesus with the child. I'm holding hands. Now, some of you kids are getting a little bit big. You probably don't hold your daddy's hand anymore. But some of you do, okay? All right. Um, God wants us to think of him and Jesus as the same as our earthly father. It's just our father in heaven. What happened to you? Yes, you still have to hold hands while you're grounded. Okay. All right. So uh, we, God wants us to have a relationship with him like we would with our own, with our dad, you know, that's here on earth. All right. He's just not physically here with us. He lives in heaven, right? But we can talk to him and have conversations with him just like we do our earthly dead, okay? The next line is, hallowed be thy name. So what name do I have here? Jesus. Jesus. Whether it's Jesus, whether it's God, whichever, whether we're talking about God or his son, we want to treat their, both of their names with great respect, respect, right? Okay, so that's what that's what we're saying here. Okay, we want we're, we consider your name very important, and we're not going to use it the wrong way. Okay, Thy kingdom come. What are we asking when we say that in prayer? Do you know, Kyle? That you will come to heaven one day. Well, we all pray that we get the chance to go to heaven one day. But in this prayer, when we say, Thy kingdom come, we're asking Jesus to come back to earth, to take us with him up to heaven, if we haven't passed away yet. Okay? So we're waiting for that day that his kingdom will come and take all of us people who have asked Jesus into our hearts, okay? that he'll take us up to heaven at that point in time. One day we'll get to see you again. All right. Then it says, Thy will be done. So what's happening here? Yeah. One person's helping another person up, right? 
So this is just one way to think about doing God's will, okay? Being helpful and kind to others, okay? We want God's will to be done here on earth. We are here to do his will. We're here to tell people about him, share his stories, and to bring people to Christ to help them be saved so that they can go to heaven one day. And then it says, on earth as it, as it is in heaven. Then give us this day our daily bread. So here you see a picture of bread, okay? And that nourishes our earthly body, right? Bread helps to nourish our body? <coughs> yes. And But have you seen Pastor Brown use bread in the service? Uh-huh. Yeah, when does he have the bread? Uh, when, yeah, when we drink the juice and, and have the bread, that's during communion. Okay, so that's a special way to connect with God. But <clears throat> our daily bread in the Lord's Prayer, we're not talking about <coughs> bread. We're talking about reading that Bible, just like Kyle took the Shaman Bible, and he said, we hope that you use this. We hope that you read it every day. Our daily bread is to be God's Word. Okay, We're supposed to read it, even if it's just one little scripture. That's better than nothing at all. It helps keep us connected. So give us this day our daily bread is helping us to read God's Word. Forgive us our debts. What does that mean? This doesn't. Have, oh, this picture doesn't necessarily tell you exactly what that means. But forgive us our debts. What does it mean to forgive our debts? How about our sins? Yeah, you were you were saying it, weren't you, Dustin? Yeah, good. Our sins. So forgive us our sins. So here's this boy on a computer. He looks a little upset, a little scared, maybe. All right. So maybe you know, maybe you just make a mistake doing something on the computer. You mess it up. That's that's not a bad sin. But there's things that you can get into on the computer, on the internet, on the smartphone, okay, through social media and stuff that isn't good stuff, all right? So that's why it's good to stay away from that stuff or have an adult help you learn how to use it. Um, but so we're asking for forgiveness of our sins. So who knows what this boy found here, but he might need to ask him for some forgiveness. How about here? What do you think could have happened here with these two girls? Um, the tower is falling. Their tower is falling. Did the one girl maybe knock it over, start to knock it over? Yeah, maybe. Okay, maybe it was an accident. All right. But what if the other person reacted badly? That's kind of a sin, right? That so, would be her fault. So it her reaction would be her fault? Yes. It would be worse than accidentally talking about the tower. Right. Exactly. So maybe both of them have something to ask for forgiveness for. Sorry, you know, I, I knocked you over the tower, but that maybe if somebody act, reacts badly, that's that's even worse. So we need to remember to ask for forgiveness when things go wrong with friends. That's what we're trying to get at here, okay? Um, who knows the story about Pinocchio? Oh, he lies. He lies, and his what grows? No. Nose. Are we supposed to lie? No. So there's another type of debt or sin, right? So we need to ask God forgiveness for our debts or our sins, and we need to forgive those who might have sinned against us, too, right? Um, if you don't lie, and you Ask the question again, say. If you lie, tell If you lie, and then tell the truth. You just ask for forgiveness. God will always forgive you. And we pray that our friends will forgive us too if we make a mistake and we lie to them and then we tell them the truth. We're supposed to forgive. Tell them the truth first is the best thing to do, right? But sometimes we make mistakes and we might tell a lie. All right, so we ask God for forgiveness. We ask the person for forgiveness that we told the Lord to, right? So we have to be willing to forgive others just as God is willing to forgive us. That's what it says um, when we say forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And then lead us not into temptation. Anybody ever been tempted by a, a checkout like this? 
Well, yeah, you don't want to steal, and sometimes this is a real easy thing for people to steal, right? But just being tempted to want to even buy it, right? You're tempted to want to eat it, right? Well, Yummy candy? Colson's always checking it out when we go to Casio's because it's all down at his level. I'm hungry. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, well, that's true. You get hungry, so you get tempted. There's other things that we get tempted into, but this was just an easy picture to find. So, we're asking God to, to keep us away from temptation, to keep us away from people at school that might tempt us to do things that we know are wrong, too. Okay? Um, so, lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. All right? So, this is just a picture showing us going up to God's kingdom, going up to heaven one day to be with him. And if we follow his Lord, we follow the Lord's prayer, and we live by that, and we ask Jesus into our hearts, then one day we will get to enter his heavenly kingdom, okay? So I hope that helps you understand the Lord's prayer just a little bit more, because the words are a little big, and can be a little confusing. All right. Let's stand up for a word of prayer, and then I have a snack for you to take with you and maybe take it to school this week as a special treat in your lunch or something, or after school snack, okay? All right, let's bow our words for, or bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us here today, and Lord, we, I hope that these children understand the prayer that you've given us to pray when we don't have our own words. We pray that they understand it a little bit better, you know, what it's, what it's telling us and what we're actually asking when we say the prayer. And we pray that you be with them this week as they go to school, some will finish up school, as they start their summer vacations this week and next. We pray that you're with them and lead them to good decisions and good choices and keep them safe and help them to have a happy, fun summer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
did earlier this morning. We thank you for the privilege and the opportunity that you have given us to live another day with you, guiding us and leading us. We know that you hear every prayer that we pray. As we sometimes do, we want to thank you again for all those who have had a hand in our being where we are today in our spiritual lives. For where would we be without their love and their concern and knowing that we were lost and in need of being saved. So Father, we come to worship today realizing that it is now our turn. It's our turn to have a hand in helping someone in their spiritual life. We know of someone who is lost and needs to be saved. Someone who, like the young prodigal son in Scripture, who is living far away from being home with you, or someone else like the elder son, who is living close to you but doesn't realize how much you love them. As we look at our prayer list, we see the names of those who are and who were in the hospital this week, like Caitlin and Tammy, Donna and Gail and Keith. We think of those who are shut in, not able to be out like they used to be. We think about our church and the direction that it needs to go and the decisions that are going to be uh, made along the way. We think of the condition of our country and the world and we hear or we read of so much hatred and war. We hear of the envy and the greed, uh, neighbor hating neighbor, school kids shooting teachers and other students. How thankful we are for those who have loved us and cared for us. How thankful we are that we live where we do. We know that where we live is not perfect but we have freedom. We have relative safety. Father, we have to ask you to forgive us for we take so many things for granted. We don't miss them until they're gone or taken away. Forgive us. Forgive us for we are living in peace compared to so many around the world today. Forgive us for every one of us have had and will have more to eat and drink today than many in the world. We again are able to see that our cup is half full and not half empty, especially when we compare it to so many others in the world today. So help us to take some time today to count our blessings again, to realize that you continue to work in our lives. You're continuing to provide for us in mind and body and spirit. Remind us again of how blessed we are and since we are blessed you're calling us to be a blessing we ask like the disciples of old that you also continue to teach us how to pray we use the model that you gave them for when they asked you to teach them how to pray you said use this model pray like this our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Come to me, and I have no food to offer him. 
And suppose the one inside answers, don't bother me, the door is already locked, and my children and I are in bed. I can't give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give you the bread because of friendship, yet because of your shameless audacity, he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be open. Which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more your Father in heaven will give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And may it come alive in all of us today. This morning I want us to see the power of prayer. The story is told of a nationally known pastor who was on a panel during a question and answer session. And he had just responded to a question when another man stood up ready to ask his question. The pastor on the panel thought, he looks really familiar. And then he recognized him as one of his old drinking buddies. His friend had never seen him as a Christian and certainly not as a pastor. He said in their drinking days, they both did some things that they were not very proud of. Well, the man recognized him and came straight to the point. Can you tell us what made you become a Christian? A pastor. I knew you when you were a younger man, and there was not a clue that you would have made me believe that you would be doing what you're doing today. So what changed you? The man on the stage said, Hi Joe, good to see you. Been a long time, hasn't it? And I'm glad you're here. And I'm glad you asked your question. Because the answer to your question is Jesus Christ changed me. So Joe followed up with, well, if Jesus Christ changed you, how did that happen? How did he get your attention? Well, he got my attention through my wife. Huh, really? If I remember in the past, uh, you seem to go your own way without any real concern about what she wanted. So what did she do that caused you to be open to the leading of Jesus? Well, he said it wasn't what she said. It was what she did. And that Joe, at that, Joe began to laugh and ask what in the world could she have done to make you change? Well, if you remember, we would stay out pretty late at night drinking. I would try to slip into the house without her knowing when I came in, but it never worked. When I would see her, I would be ashamed. I might sometimes be angry. And at other times, I was just too long over to care. I always expected her to be there ready to yell at me or to preach at me or to cry to beg me to quit, but she never did. When she would hear me come into the house, she would get up out of bed and kneel beside the bed on her knees and pray for me. And she would keep praying until I got into bed. Again, she never yelled, she never preached. She never even begged me to quit drinking. She just prayed. And God used her prayers to open my heart and my mind to Jesus. Joe, I am a tough man. And I can cope with a nagging wife. 
but a praying wife will get you every time. A praying wife. The story could be about a praying husband or a praying parent, a praying friend or neighbor, even a relative or stranger. We know if you really want to help someone, you spend more time praying for them than you do criticizing or preaching. Because there's always greater power in prayer. Jesus taught that early on to his disciples. In Matthew 17, it records, if you remember, that Peter and James and John returned from being away for a few days and found that the other disciples were frustrated because of their ineffectiveness. In particular, a father had brought a son who was having seizures, seizures, suffering, asking the disciples to, to heal him, but they couldn't. And when Jesus arrived on the scene, you remember the father turned to Jesus immediately, and Jesus healed his son. The disciples asked, why could we not help the child? And Jesus said, this kind of healing takes place only after much prayer. Our passage today is where Luke tells us that the disciples recognized their need. In this particular passage, they couldn't drive out the demon. They wanted to know why. If you or I are going to be used of God to help other people, like those early disciples, we need to learn Jesus' secret. And the secret is prayer. So the disciples asked, Lord, teach us to pray. And as we know, Jesus gave the model that we use every Sunday. But those disciples would discover if you use that model, through your prayers, God will give power to help meet needs. For instance, after Jesus had risen from the dead, ascended to the Father, it was Peter, the leader of the early church who was taken prisoner by King Herod. Herod's intention was to kill him because he had already killed James, the brother of John, and, and he saw how it pleased the Jews. So he was going to proceed with another. The disciples didn't have the power, power to rescue Peter from prison, but they had the prayer power. While they were praying, so it reads the scripture, an angel came and released Peter from prison, and Peter went to the house where they were praying. After some serious doubting, they discovered that sometimes God does immediately answer your prayer. Gives you exactly what you're praying for. The early church learned that. They learned if you want to help someone, you pray for them. Thankfully, we don't have to turn to the disciples to only find examples of prayer church members, friends, even we ourselves could give testimony if we had time today to the prayers that we prayed that God answered. Some of those even in our own life. But we could testify about the prayer that was answered and brought healing of mind and body for spirit. I like hearing the story that happened a number of years ago when a young pastor was visiting in the home of a young couple in his church and when he was ready to leave, he asked him, is there anything specific I could pray for, for you? And they said, well, yes, there is. Would you pray that we would be able to adopt a child? We've been on that list now for a long time. We have tried ourselves to have a baby. We spent a lot of money. We've done everything the doctors have recommended. But it's not possible for us to have a child on our own. So we want to adopt. So just pray that God would enable us to adopt a child. He said it was a couple of months later when the couple was leaving church when the wife leaned over and whispered in his ear, we're going to have a baby. And the pastor whispered back, that's great. I guess the adoption came through. And she said, no, I'm pregnant. And nine months or so later, he was able to baptize Michael. 
a few months after that, they were leaving church again, and she leaned over and whispered in his ear and said, Pastor, you can stop praying. We're expecting twins. <laughs> so if you want to really help someone, you pray for them. We know that through our prayer, it influences other people. And it influences because God hears and He answers. Someone asked their pastor one day, does it really make any difference when someone prays for you? And he said, let me tell you a story. Once upon a time, there was a frog. I wasn't really a frog, but I felt like a frog. As you know, he said, frogs are slow, they're low, they're ugly, they're puffy, they're drooped, and they're stooped. I know everything about how a frog feels. The feelings come when I want to look intelligent but do something dumb. When I want to be generous but I live like Scrooge. When I want to live with an attitude of gratitude but find myself filled with feelings of envy and resentment. Those times when I want to be mature but instead find myself involved in some petty quarrels. I find there are times when I want to care, but I'm just indifferent. Once upon a time, I was like a frog. I was just sitting there on my lily pad on the pond. The pond was filled with life and excitement, but I was too fearful to participate. So I just sat there, hiding beneath my bullfrog face. Then one day, a princess came by. Everyone thought that I was just a frog, but she could see the difference. She looked like an ordinary princess, but not really. She was someone special, and she knew it. Because she was a child of the king, and because she was a princess, we knew that she could, with one kiss, change people from being slow, low, ugly, puffy, drooped, and stooped into being a prince. She came over to me. She looked down at this wrong. I just knew that she could never bring herself to kiss someone so low, ugly, puffy, stooped and drooped but she did and instantly i felt like a handsome prince so now i go around kissing people well i don't really kiss them but i help them to see what they are it's so much fun to to watch the change in their lives when they realize they are not slow and ugly and puffy and drooped and stooped the change is almost instant when they realize they're not a frog. They are a child of the king. So if you really want to help someone, you pray for them. And you pray for them because prayer is powerful. Because when we pray, God listens and he answers. He helps us to show the love of Christ to the person to whom we're praying. Never neglect praying for someone. God will not only answer our prayer for that person, but He'll bless us as well. So let's not forget when we pray, God sometimes answers instantly. Sometimes it takes some time. And sometimes he'll work through us to bring the answer. So don't forget to pray for the person that God has laid upon your heart. Let's pray. Father, we're grateful that you give us this opportunity because we know there is power in prayer. And we know that you have given it to us to not only use for ourselves, but to use for those others that we know of who are in need as well. 
to help us to continue to be a church and a people of prayer as we pray in your matchless name.